Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Let us hear the word of the Lord for us this morning. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered at him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God of revelation, mere flesh and blood cannot reveal divine truth. Only your spirit can give that gift. Be in my breath and voice. Be in our ears and understanding that through these words, your word may be known to us. Amen. This sermon was untitled until the Holy Spirit gave it to me last night. You may not know this, but I arrived in Greensboro on Monday evening after the eclipse. And I've been moving into my house and fulfilling presbytery responsibilities all week long, so... I began writing yesterday afternoon, and then last night it all changed. Thanks, Holy Spirit. So this sermon is now entitled, Two Foxes, One Hedgehog. (laughs) Go ahead, laugh. It's okay. (laughs) So here we go. During yesterday's matriculation speech to the class of 2021, Yale University President Peter Solovey encouraged his students to think like a fox, referring to a course that he co-taught years ago. The course entitled Great Big Ideas required students to consider one big idea from various fields of study each week through video selected readings and debate and discourse in classroom time. Sharing the memory, he recalled a 7th century Greek poet who said this, A fox knows many things, but a hedgehog one important thing. Solovey continues, When threatened, the fox remains flexible, coming up with a clever way to deal with with that particular matter. The hedgehog, however, responds the same way to every threat it rolls up into a ball. The fox is wily and resilient, the hedgehog consistent but inflexible. Today's scripture readings present us with an interesting dichotomy. Two foxes, one hedgehog, but three midwives of God. And yes, I did refer to Peter as a midwife for those who were listening closely. Shapira and Pua are not familiar to our reading of this particular Exodus passage, and I'm willing to bet that our recollection of Moses' birth story doesn't even begin until the second chapter of Exodus. Am I right? I thought so. It's time for that to change, though, because we need to know about these two women who change history, these midwives, these foxes. The beginning of Exodus introduces a new pharaoh. We note that he is unnamed. This ruler doesn't know Joseph and yet works to secure his political identity. 
The ancient Israelites are growing in number, which threatens the Pharaoh's rise to power. And therefore, this leader orders the Hebrew midwives to kill any boy born to an Israelite woman. The infant girls, they're not much of a threat, so they can live, he tells the midwives. These two named women, who are of no consequence to the Pharaoh, become the source of his undoing. Professor David Loos recounts their story accordingly. Pharaoh tells the Hebrew midwives, Shapira and Pua, to kill all Hebrew baby boys that are delivered, but they refuse. They do not kill the boys. They lie to Pharaoh, telling them that the Hebrew women give birth too quickly, delivering the babies before the midwives arrive on the scene. It's a courageous act of civil disobedience that changes history. For one of the boys that is spared will be called Moses, and he will lead the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity. He will deliver God's law to the Israelites and bring them to the promised land. And it all starts here, with two women willing to say no to an act of injustice. Shapira and Pua. Remember those names. Two women, two midwives, two foxes. Now, we're more familiar with Peter's stories because they're sprinkled all over the Gospels and the New Testament. We know that Peter was a fisherman. We know that Peter walked on water until he sunk. And he denied knowing Jesus Christ three times. Peter is also the first disciple to claim Jesus as the Messiah, as we see in Matthew chapter 16 from today's readings. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter's response was of the Holy Spirit. While other people, which are the disciples were included, are seeking to make sense of their encounters with Jesus by naming him a prophet, Peter is somehow able to blurt out an unanticipated, unexpected response to the pressing question at hand. But who do you say that I am? At the confession, Jesus teaches his disciples that the knowledge of his identity is not something they can know from their human experience or human reasoning. Rather, it's a gift of my Father in heaven. Peter receives the keys to the kingdom of heaven, becoming the rock, the foundation upon which the church will stand. Matthew's is the gospel through which we interpret how the gospel narrative engages the kingdom of God here on earth. So when Peter receives the blessing, he, and therefore we, he is cautioned that our bindings and loosings on earth will be repeated in heaven. What impact will our decisions bring? Peter's proclamation recaps the singular requirement for membership in the church of Jesus Christ. Devoted faith. One man, one confession, one hedgehog. President Solovey's opening address encourages Yale students to consider learning about both hedgehogs and foxes. Try them all on for size until you find the one that fits he suggests. Ultimately, however, he desires for his students to think like a fox when he says, as inspired as you might be by a single idea or way of looking at the world, I suggest that you entertain many different ways of thinking and consider various points of view. The lectionary texts offer us some varying points of view today. Both foxes and hedgehogs carry out, they are midwives of God's work in the world. Shapira and Pua, the two foxes, they rescued Moses that he might go on to rescue the Israelites. Peter, the hedgehog, received the keys to the kingdom because of his devoted faith to Jesus Christ, our Messiah. The two foxes outwild their captor, Pharaoh, allowing boys to live. Their blatant disregard for the law saved lives. It was simultaneously a small gesture and a heroic act. 
They disobeyed, and because of their act of disobedience, God was able to rescue Israel from oppression. The hedgehog, now, he didn't know any other way to respond when pushed, so he declared what had been made known to him through the Holy Spirit. Peter made the first Trinitarian declaration of faith in the Gospels. Peter became the rock upon which God will place other stones as over time Christ builds a people for himself. So church, as we head into a new school year, some have already started, some will begin tomorrow, some are anxious parents like others, we must consider who we will be. Will we think like a fox or will we think like a hedgehog? Luckily, there's not a right or wrong choice. Two foxes plus one hedgehog equaled three midwives ushering God's promises into being. Right now, what I see is the church being more hedgehog-like. We are taking after our rock. Peter spoke without a full understanding of what the Messiah would be. Nevertheless, he spoke, allowing the Holy Spirit to be his voice. Peter lived a life where understanding eventually came to follow belief. Christ's church is faithful, built with people committed to following a call and a commitment, all of which leads to eventual understanding. We raise and we nurture members of our congregation because of our commitment to baptismal vows and because of our commitment to following the gospel message. Sometimes, if we are lucky, we see the fruits of our faithful, belief-based labors. Often, though, we don't see them. But we are hedgehogs anyway. We heed the call, we stick to our vows. As we grow together, we come to a deeper understanding of a Messiah-led life of ministry. But I wonder, is there space for the church to be more fox-like, too? Today, as a new school year begins for all ages and stages in this building and on campuses well beyond the property lines of Starmount, we recognize that small actions have ripple effects. We acknowledge the bravery of Shapira and Pua, the two foxes that changed the world, and were a little hedgehog-like through their fear of God and their faith in God. We blessed backpacks, you welcomed a new resident, and we're celebrating Ukirk ministry and Ukirk students today. So we're inviting ourselves to think like foxes a little bit to expand the wily ways that we care for the next generations of the church in the world. And we do it while curled up in a ball, maybe, resting in the comfort of Peter's unexpected profession of faith. The hedgehog who relied upon the one truth that he knew. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, our Lord, and our God. Knowing that Christ gathered us to be members of his church here and now, we ask the Holy Spirit to make certain our belief of God's presence in a world full of doubts. Ending the matriculation speech, Dr. Salovey rhetorically asked the students, what does the fox say? Don't answer it. Please don't answer it. To which he offered a cunning response, appropriate for those entering collegiate studies. As the new director of Ukirk Greensboro, I ask you this for consideration. How do the fox and the hedgehog continue to work together to nurture the here and now the younger generations of our church and of our world. I invite you to dream big with me. I want you to pray faithfully with me. I ask you to join me in ministry to our Ukirk students, a ministry of presence, a ministry of finances, a ministry of food, a ministry of talent sharing, and a ministry of so much more. So hear this now you foxes and you hedgehogs, all of you midwives. As we engage in life and ministry together, let us pledge to listen carefully, 
to engage one another, to explore the new, to use our natural curiosities for discovery, all while consistently replying, re, excuse me, consistently relying upon the spirit's, spirit's guidance. So let's be flexible and inflexible. Let's be wily and steady. Let's simultaneously hold a little bit of skepticism and a whole lot of faith. We'll follow the examples of two foxes and the one hedgehog who encourages us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of God, our designer, Christ, our Messiah, and the Holy Spirit of wily ways, we pray. Amen. Would you join me in a responsive prayer, or prayer of response? God of purpose, you took a baby from the Nile and used him to lead your people. You invited a fisherman to fish for people and made him the foundation of your church. You took two imprisoned women and gave them the courage to disobey the Pharaoh. Stir in us new cravings so that we might receive again the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, continuously at work and ever commanding our commitment. Amen. <laughs>